Ahoy, hello dear listeners, welcome to another podcast and I would like to also welcome here my today's guest, Dr. Adnan Mazari, Assistant Professor at Technical University Liberec. Hello Adnan. Hello Katrina. Let's start with the introduction. How did you end up in the Czech Republic? Okay, so I, I came first time in 2008. I was around, I think, 20 years old. I think I confess that I never heard of Czech Republic as a country before. I didn't even know where exactly it is in Europe. And uh, I was a student of uh, bachelor studies and I wanted to learn something more. more. It's not about the money or travel that I want to move somewhere. I wanted to just uh, have an experience how it is. I was doing my textile engineering at that time. So Czech Republic, uh, I write to one professor about some machines. He writes me back, we have some internship option if you want to come. I agreed, but considering like you are in your in 1920s and you somebody asks you to come, then you have to make your passport and all that stuff. You are not re ready for it. So I, I made it, I, I came over here in 2008 and it was the first year in Czech Republic when Czech Republic entered to the Schengen or something. So it was very newly adapting to the foreigners. They offered me master degree in textile at Technical University of Liberec. It's in the north of Czech Republic. I agreed on it. I finished my studies. I came here, I did my master, but till this time, I'm always thinking this is my last year. I will finish it, I'll go back. Then I finished my master degree. I finished it with distinction. So it's a uh, quite honorary. And then I successfully finished my PhD as well. They offered me a job as a teacher. So now I teach at Technical University of Liberec. So it's uh, almost 11, 12 years being in Czech Republic. Why I choose, by the way, Czech Republic? I'm from a very, very hot part of Pakistan. Temperature in the summer can easily go 50 to 53 degrees centigrade. At that time, I never saw a snowfall in real, like how the snowfall actually happened. So in this thing, when I see the Libras and Czech Republic, it made me very excited that it's a cold part. You have the snow, you can do skiing, and, and it's, even in the summer, it's quite cold. So I think I was very enthusiastic about it. So that was one of the reasons why I chose Czech Republic. And what about the Czech culture once that you arrived? What did you learn about it? Oh. Uh, It's, uh, I think it, I would say, how was my cultural shock? Czech Republic in 2008, 9, 10 wasn't having a very good image in the Asia, as maybe in, uh, so I'm, I'm from Pakistan, so it wasn't having a very big image, as a good image. I don't know if you have seen the movie Hostel. So, so it's, a, it's a teenager movie on which we see the Czech Republic and Slovakia, they take the foreigners and take some parts of the body. <laughs> So I, I have seen that movie, then some of my father friend have been to Czech Republic or somewhere and they said they, they steal the, the car parts and the, the radio of the car is very common to be stolen in Czech Republic. So this is first imagination of me coming to Czech. There are no like smartphones, no applications, so I need to come and, and even now if you say somebody come to Prague and then come to Libres by yourself, still it's difficult and at that time I think it was very difficult and I think if somebody say me now to come, maybe I would say, no, I thank you very much. I don't want to come. So as a culture one, uh, first shock was when I, I come to the Czech Republic, In uh, you get the dormitories, like dormitories are uh, in Libres, I would say they have really one of the best dormitories, which I've seen in Europe. So you have a com apartment in which there are two or three rooms and you share it with uh, another people. If there are boys, there are boys in the apartment. If there are girls, there are girls. But in the summer, uh, I think because of less buildings are open, so people who are like uh, couples or who want to stay together, they can stay with their girlfriend, boyfriend, and the other room I was staying with the one Czech friend. So when you're coming at start, it's very strange thing that you are staying with somebody, like you're not married to, but you're staying. First of my cultural shock was this guy, his name was Daniel, and he was staying with his girlfriend. I said to him, Uh, isn't it wrong you are staying with a girl? And he said, why? You are also staying with a boy. <laughs> so, okay, it's, it's a, it's a, it was uh, very strange, but then I realized, yes. It's, and I never knew because that boys can marry it with boys and girls. I knew it, but I, it's, it wasn't common. I think even in 2008, even in Czech Republic, it wasn't a very common known thing. Then I came to know about more that people can be gays. And I said, okay. And when I go to university, it was first time to see uh, 
a black person. I don't know why the still a fear was there. Maybe it's from the media or something. So when I meet one person in the start, he was uh, from Senegal. He was maybe two times bigger than me. And I don't know, it was my luck or something. His name was Gail. And he came in the start and he made a handshake with me and said, I am gay. And I, I, I got very afraid. <laughs> Maybe it is a culture here that you have to ch- tell your sexual preference before meeting or something. And he was staying in the same dormitory. Two, three days I was avoiding him that I shouldn't even come across him. But he's a, uh, he became a good friend later on. And uh, I think uh, I got used to that people can be different in color, different in their uh, likings. And it's, a, it's absolutely nice to meet people. But I, I, I didn't have this experience before. So it was first of the cultural shock for me. I think the second one was uh, in dormitories, it was very common that if you are using a bathroom or toilet, for example, the, my, my friend or other people, they are using the bath area of the bathroom, but they keep the door open so anybody can come and go and use the sink which according to me was very, very uh, like uh, unacceptable. Like it's not my privacy to be there. So they, if somebody is taking a bath, you come, you handshake, you make your uh, toothbrush or anything. So, but it was very common. I said to them, look, it's not acceptable to me. So they said, okay, we'll, we are going to, on the weekend, we are going to Prague. So if you're free, you can join us. And I said, where will you stay? And so this Daniel and his girlfriend and I was there, we were friends now. He said, we will stay in some dormitory and uh, we can see the Prague as well. I said, okay. So I went with him, them and this dormitory was in, in Prague in near to the Petrini. It was, uh, it's a Charles University dormitory. I think one of the ugliest dormitory I have ever seen. I went with them. It's a very, very narrow room with uh, one bed here, one bed here. And thus the table can come. It was also a mix, the boys, girls, everybody. So he took me to the end of the corridor. There are, is a kitchen, which is very dirty. Like it's uh, uh, dirty, a lot of people using it. The biggest shock was seeing the bathrooms. At that time, it was in 2008, nine. it was common that boys and girls were having the same bathrooms. And it was one wall with five showers on it. Anybody can go naked, take a bath and come back. There was no curtains, nothing. So five showers here, five behind of you. and uh, you have to feel that nobody is looking at you and you are not looking at anyone. And it's, I think it was very, very difficult. It's, uh, and uh, after that, they did some small changes that they put a small paper outside. If, if some boys is there, they put it inside. But till you come there, everybody sees inside. Okay, it's a boy is there. <laughs> it's a, I think it was really no privacy. So I want to ask you, is it really normal? Like, is it acceptable? Well, it is much more acceptable for us. It's also the same culture in Germany. Like I heard from another foreigners that they are shocked when they go to a swimming pool or wellness area and there are saunas where you go without the swimsuit. That's the common way that we do it. But it shocks some foreigners. But, you know, it's like, after all, we are all human. So it would be weirder if somebody would come And he would be in a swimsuit because then it would be like, is he hiding something? That's strange. So that's the perception for us. That's really true. Because when I'm going there, I even in the swimming pool now, even when you go to swimming pool in the boys section as well, you become completely naked. You take a bath, you go inside. But this is not acceptable. I don't know. It's not so much uh, private. Like it's something private. I don't want people to see it. And being from Asia, you people are very hairy in Asia. So it's, uh, I, and it, so it was still a very big shock. And because of this reason, I avoid the swimming pools now. Because it's uh, just so strange that a person now is going to the toilet, is just going naked, and you can just see the behind of a person, which is not even beautiful. <laughs> it is, I guess that you know that there are even beaches or camps that are only for naked people in the Czech Republic. Uh, I live in uh, Libres in part called Vesis. And in Vesis, there is a big lake and that is a, it's a nude lake. So I, I didn't knew about that. <laughs> I didn't know that it's like this. When I go over there in the morning, people are coming and it's early morning, it's seven, eight o'clock, completely becoming naked with family, going to the water and coming out. 
I said, why? They don't have to do it like this. So I always thought maybe because the costume become wet, it takes time to dry it. Maybe that's why just to save the costume, they are doing it. Well, actually, my aunt is one of the people who go to uh, these beaches. So I also asked her and she just told me that when she is swimming, she doesn't like uh, the feeling of the wet swimsuit on her. So that's why she prefers these places. I don't know. Probably just for disclosure, we should say that people can do it only in designated areas. So it doesn't mean that you can arrive to the Czech Republic and go naked to any beach or any swimming pool that you want to. No, it's really only at restricted areas and there will be signs showing you that this is the place. So if you want to do it, please do it only there. So what else have you seen or spotted as strange for you in the Czech Republic? For example, being from Asia, I like people coming to my home. But in, in Czech Republic, it's not a very common thing. If you are very close, yes, you can meet them at their house. But uh, I learned that going to a hiking is a part of the cultural meeting. Like you meet with friends going on a hiking. But I never did like this, that I will be walking 10 kilometers <laughs> just to talk with you. No, I'm not going to do that. So it is a, a little strange, uh, but I think overall, the people are nice. It's maybe a few percentage, very few percentage you can find it. Uh, I don't say racist, but it's a uh, uh, Czech Republic. I think they don't even have the hardcore races who are really uh, like into the, uh, I don't know, the gun sides or the armor side. So what's your perception? What the life of a foreigner and Asian looking person living in the Czech Republic? And I mean, especially in a less cosmopolitan city like Liberec is? I like Liberec. I worked in Prague for one year. It's, it's a nice city. It's a big city, very fast. And uh, you get to meet a lot of foreigners and other nationalities. But I like Liberec. It's a small town, not noisy, not crowded. So I think it's nice. And in terms of uh, acceptance to the that you are from Asia, I think it's very less especially in Libres when I came, I think I was maybe the first one from Pakistan. They asked me, why are you here? I said, Czech University has very nice machines and equipment. I want to see it. I, and they were asking me, you don't have it in Pakistan? I said, no, we don't have it. And he was, but you have nuclear bombs. I said, yeah, we do have nuclear bombs, but we don't have this machine. So I think being a different color, I think it's not a, really a problem. They, you can be very good with a lot of Czech friends, you can make it and I don't think color makes any difference in your opinion or in your friendship. I don't know, maybe some people have a bad imagination, it's, it's possible everywhere they exist. But overall, it's, um, it's a nice society and uh, you can be friend, you can be good, but merging into the society is still very difficult, I, I would say. And I find it that Czech is the only nation which can make really bad jokes really bad jokes like there is a like it's not only they don't think it is bad for example making a joke like that in america england or even in pakistan somebody may put me into the jail but it's a, it's a, it's very common and they can laugh on it in which is very inappropriate to say it into the somebody for example jokes about color jokes about uh, nationalities, people, even from Moravia to Bohemia, like the jokes, is a, and they can be really dirty, but it's, uh, I think it's acceptable and nobody cares about it. But it's, uh, I find it like this is very strange thing, acceptable in Czech society. Yes, you are right. That's one of the things that I figured out that I really have to keep only for Czech Republic, because whenever I'm in foreign country, I have to like think about it. Oh, I can't make any jokes because they wouldn't know that it's only a joke that I'm not a racist or that, you know, because we are really doing jokes about everything and everyone. And that can be about black people, even handicapped people. And I mean, <laughs> it's really part of our culture. I don't mean anything bad about those people. I don't want to hurt anyone's feeling. And when you are talking check to check, we know that it's like this level, but it's really a very sensitive when you happen to say it to someone who is not familiar with this culture so i just try to avoid it oh yeah in from pakistan we are i think as a nation we like jokes i think it's a, it's a part of our culture we really accept a lot of different range of jokes 
I think other than the religion, I think we are quite open, <laughs> open for it. But uh, when I come to the Czech, that openness I have never seen that you can make a joke. And before in the start, when they used to translate a joke from Czech to English, it's really not funny. <laughs> like it's, it's, uh, you are offending somebody very bad. I guess that we have already touched this topic, but what do you like and dislike about the, your life in the Czech Republic? Okay, so for the liking, I think I have quite many things about, uh, I like the nature, I I like the system itself, how, for example, the cleaning people are working, how the, the buses are working, how trains, the passes, the, 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 all the system itself, I really like it, somebody designed it very well, and that things are according to some rules, so it, I like it, like it's more acceptable to me as a person, okay, like it is like this, it is yes or no according to some rules, uh, but on the other side, which I dislike i think it has the poorest customer service in the world <laughs> I, i i used to think why they it's the first country i saw where they don't even smile when you're buying something from them they have uh, maybe at least they even argued some time for some small stupid things like i want the shoe number 39 and she will give me a very bad face ah you need a 39 <laughs> this is your job so i i, I find it very strange but later on many of my friends who were working there so i came to know i think it's all money related because they are uh, less paid so when you are not happy with what you are getting paid for the smile is uh, is with money it's, it cannot come uh, when you are uh, underpaid so i think it is one of the reason and secondly i think uh, because of this less foreigners from asia in the past the whole system never developed itself for the Asians coming. For example, like the the Czech language. You come to the lesson. First lesson is this is accusative. <laughs> But <laughs> I don't even know the alphabet. <laughs> and you in in third lesson you are going with genitive, locative, and you are thinking about like I don't even know the letters well. I can't even pronounce them. But later you realize the language itself is difficult. The system is made for the Slavic who are little knowing about it. And they will learn it quickly and start speaking. So within Three, four months they are speaking and people who are coming from asia they are even two years they are over there sitting and still not able to understand what is going on in their life so i think the teaching style is still not developed the other thing i think is the i think that is the salary to your living style in czech republic i find it that the money you earn 60 or 50 goes to just your renting which is very strange according to me around the world because mostly it is 20, 30% going to the rent and then it is yours. But in Czech Republic, I find it that you have 50, 60% going to your rent and then uh, some services. And if you go to one or two times to a pub or a restaurant and then you are coming to a zero level and then you wait for the next salary. And the more you earn uh, the money, the less intelligent you are. For example, the... If you are a car mechanic, you are a bicycle repair person, you are a mechanic for uh, plumbing, for example, or you can make the construction like roads or something or building, you get the highest salary and you don't use your brain at all. You just do the work and at the evening you are fine. On the other side, if you are in a university, in some education or some scientific uh, research center, The whole system is not, I don't know, happy with it or they don't want it. So it's just, I find it, which is not good. Now, even in, in a university, finding a Czech person to come and teach to a university is very hard. I think government are changing their policies from last few years, but it will take time. But overall, people who do the work by hand, like physical works, I think they are more appreciated or uh, maybe more paid. According to me. Yeah, yeah, you are probably touching one of the topics that uh, the Czech society is now solving or trying to figure out. And uh, that's for sure this problem that the teachers, not only in university, but also in elementary schools and high schools, their salaries are not appropriate to the level of work that they do and society shall appreciate those people more so this is a discussion that goes on and on and on mm. and there is some slow progression 
and I hope it will get better, but it is definitely one of the things that are still in progress. And as you were talking about those, let's say, handymen, it's like another problem that it's very difficult to find a person who is really good at these jobs. So if they are able to do it properly, then people are really paying them with gold because they are just so happy that somebody comes to their home and fixes their or something. And even when you know someone who is good at it, it's like a contact that you pass only to your very good friends. Like this handyman is really good one. So you can give him a call. So, so you have spotted it very correctly. And is there a Pakistani community in the Czech Republic? Uh, in Czech Republic, I find it Uh, especially in Prague and Brno, they do have. In Libras, we have only people who are coming to study. It's just uh, maybe 10 or 12 students who come to do the PhD because Pakistan government pays them if you do the PhD. So they come here, do the studies, and then they have to return back. So these are not uh, permanently going to stay here. But in Prague and Brno, I see many of them who are married to the Czechs. So it's a, it's a family and they live. I can't say so much big, but yes, uh, if you count them, let's say in Prague, will be somewhere around five, six hundred people at least will be there. So it is small, but quite active. And they are, I find it nice that none of them is in uh, small positions of, uh, for example, begging money or something. I always find them either is a doctor or some working in a university or is a businessman. And I, I, I saw some of the chains of uh, uh, Potravini in Prague and it's called Mani Mini Market. So it belongs to one Pakistani guy. So I like it is uh, people are uh, doing business and not uh, running on some social monies. <laughs> some time ago, I watched a Pakistani movie. I'm not sure if you know this one. It's called Tifa in Trouble. Part of the movie was in Pakistan, in Lahore. And the second part was situated in Poland. And I just wonder, is there a significant Pakistani community in Poland or was it just a coincidence? I think it must be just a coincidence because I don't think they have it a lot in Poland. Uh, but Czech Republic and Poland is, I think, used a lot in the last few decades, like few maybe years that they're using it for uh, uh, like some dance in the Liberace Town Hall is going on. In, in the Warsaw, in the center, there is some small music going on and it's a part of the film. So I think maybe it's cheaper for them and the Czech and the Polish cinema industry is really supportive for the Asians to do it. I don't know how much money they get or is it just for the advertisement of the country, but it is now much more convenient for them as compared to Switzerland or going some expensive places. I guess that you have visited Slovakia, right? I have visited and I have many friends from there, yes. And from your perspective, have you spotted some differences between Czech Republic and Slovakia? I think I'm quite good in actually if determining if somebody is from Czech or Slovak or Russian or Ukraine. I'm quite good in that. I would say that many foreigners from Ukraine, Hungary came to Slovakia as compared to the Czechs. People are more talk starters like when you meet them they like to start the talk and start to, but on the other side in Czechs you have to start it and then they are very good they can continue with it but they will never take the initiative of starting a conversation so I think I like uh, that part in Slovakia is very international but it is not as developed as is Prague is nothing as compared to Bratislava so it's uh, not comparable but it's uh, it's nice it's, I think the difference between Bohemia and Moravia, it is similar between Czech and the Slovakia. So it's a, people are a little more smiley. <laughs> yeah, I you can are ask right. you, are you from Bohemia? I'm Moravia? from Bohemia, but I can, <laughs> I can really <laughs> confirm that it's correct. Because even okay. we from Bohemia think that people from Moravia are more cordial or the, the ones that really are starting conversations and they are saying that we are a bit more cold people. And yeah, we just agree with that, I guess. As you said, when you came to the Czech Republic in 2008, you didn't know much about the Czech Republic. Do you think that now it kind of changed when you come back to Pakistan and you say to friends or family that you are in the Czech Republic, do they have some idea about the Czech Republic or is it still just some country somewhere? 
I think it has changed really a lot because when I see in 2008, 9, even till 2013, it wasn't known. And when I'm saying I'm in Czech Republic, I need to say it's very near to Germany. It's very near to the Austria. Uh, but now from the last, I think, four or five years, I think they are trying to bring a lot of tourists from Asia and especially they made some direct flights from Dubai, from Qatar, from uh, and other places uh, from Asia which are coming directly and Indian tourists. So now Prague is a very well-known place. When they say that you have been uh, in Europe, they ask you, okay, have you been to Paris? Have you been to Prague? Have you been to Rome? So Prague is really in the top maybe five or six uh, uh, destinations. So it has become uh, quite famous in the last few years. So I don't have to tell them that, no, it's uh, near to Germany or something. I can say I'm from Czech Republic, yes. Are there any brands uh, that people know about in Pakistan coming from Czech Republic, like Škoda car? We don't have Škoda cars. And maybe one of the reasons is uh, it's, uh, we have a left-hand drive. but uh, So it doesn't become very famous. Usually we have the cars from... Uh, either locally produced or coming from Japan. And so it's, Škoda is not famous, but there is one shoe, shoe company, Bata. It's very famous in, in Pakistan. It's a school shoe company mostly. It makes other products, but it's more famous for the shoes, for the schools and other children. But then I came to know, okay, it's from, uh, from Czech Republic. So it was uh, strange for me to know it. And I think uh, now from the last few years, it's a lot of investment from Pakistan to Czech Republic in the textile field. So some of the textile industries are now run by Pakistani businessmen. So it is a little strange because textile is not going so well in Czech Republic and nobody wants to buy it. So I think uh, Pakistan still has good expertise in it. So they are, I see like one or two companies that completely bought by Pakistanis and running it quite nicely. So this is a new trend going on. Uh, but overall, it has a good reputation now until I think last year they find uh, some people, woman who was caught doing some narcotics exchange and caught in Pakistan. It made a bad image of uh, Czech Republic. But still, I would say the Pakistan government was a little lenient for it. The punishment they gave wasn't really the hardest one. And secondly, two of the women were kidnapped near to the border of Afghanistan and Pakistan. I think it makes the image bad. And Pakistan is really quite big for it. Like if I say like I am from the hottest part, but we have the Himalayas on the top, which is very cold. Then we have the border with Afghanistan and Iran, which is uh, quite far. Means I had never been there. My, maybe my father will never allow me even to go there. So it's, uh, it's quite uh, big and everybody has his own pockets of uh, like uh, good livings. If we would now have a listener who is kind of thinking about studying anywhere in Europe, why should he or she choose Czech Republic? Czech Republic is cheap. You cannot find this tuition fees anywhere in Europe. The process is quick. You don't need to give any IELTS exam. Just your, if you show that the last education was in English and that's enough. Secondly, the survival is much easier. If uh, you are over here and every month you need maybe two or 300 euros and you can live very peacefully as a student as compared to any other European country like uh, Germany, Austria, you just cannot survive on your parents' money. It's not even possible. And lastly, I think still they have a lot of jobs, this handy jobs available in Czech Republic. If you can do it, still it exists. So I think uh, it's more on the financial side. If you can afford it, yes, Harvard is very good. Oxford is very good, means uh, this MIT from USA, very good. Yes, if you can afford it, why not? Means, But if you can't, like in the Europe, I think Czech Republic is still very, very good uh, place to see your future. Okay, great. So thank you so much for finding time for the podcast. And I'm wishing you a very nice time in Liberec. Thank you very much, Katrina. It was nice talking to you. and. Uh, I hope you will be able to make interviews of different people around the world. <laughs> Dear listeners, thank you so much for being here with us and see you next time. Bye-bye.